girls, welcome to today's mobility video. So today we're actually going to do something a little bit different. As opposed to just holding really long, slow, static stretches, what we're gonna do is really focus on some movement of our joints. So these are also known as cars or controlled articular rotations. The reason why everyone should include these in their daily routine is because as humans, we get stuck in the same position for a long time. We get stuck sitting at our desk, driving our car, laying in our bed, sitting down, that's about it. So it's really good to remind our body that we do have different um, ranges of movement that we can get into and to really find new, new places. As we get older, we move less. You've all heard it before. If you move, if you don't move it, you lose it. So we need to move it, okay? So I'm gonna start with our upper body and then I'm gonna go down onto the floor with some different movements. So the goal of the cars is to only move the joint that we're actually working on, okay? So we're gonna start with our neck, hands by your side. I want you to create a little bit of tension everywhere. So you're not gonna be loose. You're gonna squeeze your core tight, squeeze the floor, squeeze your butt, squeeze your quads. We're gonna drop our chin down to our chest. Take it across to your shoulder and now take your chin all the way back up, point it to the roof. I don't want you to move your whole body. We're only moving our neck. So we're lifting up all the way around, chin to our other shoulder, grazing back down our chest and then we're gonna reverse it. So again, maintaining tension through your body. The only thing moving should be your neck. We're gonna go one more each direction. Don't hold your breath with this. Squeeze everything, but keep breathing. We don't want to rush these movements. Nice and slow, they're controlled. If you get a little bit of pain or pinching pain, just bring that movement back. You should have pain-free movement, okay? We're now gonna go into our scap car. So scap is the muscle in our back. Um, between our shoulder blades. So you're gonna have your arms out in front. Squeeze your fist, drop your shoulders away from your ears. What you're going to do now is lift your shoulders up to your ears, and then you're going to pull your shoulder blades back. So you're squeezing them, drop them down so shoulders away from your ears, but still pulling back, and then push forward. So I don't you want you to really round your spine, but just separate your shoulder blades without moving everything else. We're gonna go three more this direction. I'll turn sideways so you can see. Shoulders up to my ears, rounded through my shoulder blades. Squeezing back, down, and forward. Now lifting up, back, down, and forward. We're gonna do one more this way. Lifting up, squeeze together at the back, drop those shoulders down, and around. Now we're going to reverse that. So that means keeping your shoulders down, you're gonna pull them back, squeeze. Keep those elbows straight. Lifting up to your ears, and then rounding forward. Down, back, up, and forward. Nothing else is moving but your shoulder blades in circular movements, not a square. Let's do one more here. Up, forward, and down. So we're really starting to practice sliding our shoulder blades. This will help when we get into our pull-ups and our handstands and pushing movements and pulling movements as well. Next thing we're gonna do is our thoracic. So thoracic is this part of your back, the upper back. I want you to cross your hands on your chest, and you're going to turn to the side, but notice my hips are still facing forward, so I'm going to rotate to the right, take my ribs to my hips, so drop down, and then I'm going to lean back, rotating all the, the way around, squeeze my shoulder blades together. Now I'm gonna think about lifting my spine up to the roof, back to the other side, rib cage to hips, around so all the way forward, Separate those shoulder blades. Nothing else is moving here. So let's go again. Rotate to the left, ribs to hips, all the way back. Extend that spine, the top spine. You might get some cracks here. Back down and around. Remember, maintaining tension. It is hard work. You can hear me popping. This is what you want. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Lift up and extend. Nothing else moving. Back down, ribs to hips and Forward, reverse it one more time. Rotate around, back, lifting up and back down. We're gonna go to our shoulders now, guys. So again, create some fists, hold nice and tight. I like to hold across my stomach so I know nothing's moving. I'm gonna lift my thumb up to the roof. 
Here I'm gonna to get to a bit of a roadblock. So when that happens there, I'm going to pull back, but I'm going to internally rotate from my shoulder, keep pulling back, and then I'm gonna twist my hand so the back of my hand is next to my thigh. Now my pinky's facing up. I'm gonna reverse it backwards, so I'm still internally rotated from the shoulder. Lifting up as high as I can, you'll get to this roadblock here. That's when I start to externally rotate and lift up and all the way back over. One more on this side, lifting up, squeezing everything. Don't turn around like this. I just want you to pull your shoulder back, back of your hand to your leg, lifting up and reverse it. Rotate up and back down. Good job, girls. Let's go on the other side now. Thumb goes up. Get to that roadblock. Internally rotate that shoulder. Drop it forward and pull that hand back. Remember, we're creating as much range through that shoulder joint as we can. Lifting up, reverse it. Externally rotate, lift up and back down. We're gonna go through one more on this side and then we're gonna head to the floor. Lifting up, rotating around. Pull that hand all the way back down to your thigh. Finish with the reverse direction. Up, lifting up all the way around and back down. Good job, girls. Now we're gonna to head to the ground to finish some cars on our lower body. Alrighty, now that we're on the floor, we're going to work through some controlled articular rotations through our lower body joints. I wanna remind you girls that if you are feeling um, pain, then just bring that range back a little bit so you're not forcing it into a painful area. Just bring it back. So any movement is good movement. Any pain-free movement is good movement as well, okay? So the second thing I want you to think about is that you may feel a lot of clicks and cracks, maybe like bubbles, things popping in your, in your joints. That is normal, although it shouldn't be here. It's just over time, we've forgotten to move our body into these different kinds of ranges. So our body's not used to going there. The more and more you do these in each joint, the less and less you'll hear those cracks and clicks, okay? This is also going to help us become strong in our end range. So we kind of are mitigating injury in case we fall over and put our wrist on the floor. We know that our wrist has been in that position before because we've really woken it up to that range, okay? and that's why that's really important, especially as we get older and we forget that we're not moving as much. So we're gonna go into, we'll finish with our wrist cars whilst we're down here. So I want your elbow to be pulled into your rib cage, forearm facing up. You can do this with a closed fist or open. We're gonna do it open today. I want you to think about having a wine glass balancing on your forearm. So we're drawing really big slow circles with our wrist without twisting our forearm here, okay? So only that joint. Try not to curl your fingers up as you lift your hand up. Keep it nice and straight all the way around. Lifting back up and then reverse it. All the way down, lifting our hands up, rotating back towards us and back down. One more on each side. Nice, slow and controlled, keeping your forearm to the roof. And reverse it. Up, around and back down. Also a really good one if you struggle with holding weights in your front rack or pushing off the floor or your handstands or even if you get a little bit of wrist injury from falling or playing sport or sitting at your computer all day this is also really really good to do. I suggest most of you guys try to do this every couple of days not for this long you can just pick a joint and work on some cars um, just to really get that body moving and remind you of that range that you can go into. Now we're gonna go to our hips. So I want your hands on the ground in front of your shoulders. I'll go sideways so you can see me. Lock those elbows out. So elbow pits facing forward and pushing through your shoulders. We're gonna start with our left foot. So I want you to keep a nice long spine, create tension, so pull the floor. You're gonna lift your knee up to your left elbow, lift it out, and up. The first thing that's gonna happen is your right elbow is gonna bend. So let's push it away, push the floor away, lock it out. Keep those hips parallel. Pull your leg to kind of like a leg curl or bent behind you and back in. Then reverse it, lifting up, squeeze your butt. Knee out to the side, pull it to your elbow. Don't move anything else. And back down. It should be hard for you, that's okay. It's supposed to be hard. Push the floor away. Create tension through that core. Let's do one more, all the way back. Squeeze your butt, knee out, pull it to your elbow. Keep your elbow straight and back in. All right, let's go for the other, the other leg. Right knee to right elbow. 
right knee out to the side. This is where your left elbow wants to bend. Let's lock it out. All the way up and around. Keep your hips parallel to the ground. Back down, reverse it. But up, out to the side. Right knee to right elbow and pull your knee back in. That is a hard one. You can also do that one standing up if you need to, girls. Now we're just gonna go through spinal curls. These are my favorite. Really, really important that your spine is tiny little bones, your vertebrae, and sometimes they get stiff and stuck together, especially when we get older, our posture starts to roll forward like this and your vertebrae will get stuck there. So we need to work on moving that into its range. So the first one you can do is back in quadruped position. So knees underneath your hips, hands underneath your shoulders. We're gonna start at the top of our body and work all the way down to our hips. So you're gonna tuck your chin in. Push the floor away. Start to round through your upper back like a cat camel. I'm working down my spine, slowly tucking one vertebrae in at a time. And then I'm gonna squeeze my butt and tuck my hips under. Then I'm gonna reverse it. So keeping my upper body pushed and chin tucked in, I'm gonna drop here like this. I'm still pushing up through here. Work through my spine. It should be like a worm or a snake working through my spine. Squeeze my shoulder blades together and lift up. We're gonna do one more. So starting at my chin. Chin tucked in. Notice this is still pointing towards the ground. Push up and away. Separate those shoulder blades and the vertebra through your back. Working down the bottom of your tailbone and squeezing your butt underneath. And then reverse it. Tailbone goes up to the roof. Still push the floor away. Chin tucked in. Drop through the shoulder blades, up through the thoracic and up. Bring your knees in, butt goes on your feet. Hands just underneath your shoulders. We're gonna work through our thoracic. If there's one thing you can do, I want you to work on this every single day. This is so important for our posture. So from here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna think about sliding my hands against the ground and I'm pushing up, chin tucked in, elbows straight. Now I'm gonna lift my chin up and think about pulling the floor towards me, lifting up and working down through my thoracic. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, shoulders away from your ears, pushing up, and then we're gonna reverse it, chin tucked in, pushing the floor away, round those shoulder blades, work through your spine, and back up. This one's really good because it removes movement from the lumbar, and often when we don't have movement through our thoracic, like this, we tend to use our lumbar, and that's what also can cause injury through our lower back as well. Last one we're gonna finish with, Girls, is sitting on the ground. We're gonna do our ankle cast. So I want you to think about squeezing your quads, keeping your knee pointing up to the roof and drawing a really big slow circle with your foot. So I don't want you to twist from the hip or the knee. Let's go one really big one one way and then reverse it. This is really good if you've had really bad ankle injury sprains from running netball, basketball, whatever it may be create a little bit more space. If you have trouble with your squat mobility, you can also think about it coming from your ankles. So this is gonna be a really, really good exercise to start to create a little bit more range through your ankles. Other side, I like to rest my calf muscle on my foot here. Squeeze my quads, knee pointing up to the roof. Flex that foot, let's take it down. Twist it all the way around, pull it back up, flex it as far as you can. One more this way. Rotate around and then back the other way. Point down, pull up and around. Back down, around. And you're done. There you go, girls. That's a full body cars movement. Like I said, you can pick some joints. If you know your workout is more upper body, do some upper body cars. Neck, shoulder blades, thoracic, shoulders, even your wrists. If you're just feeling a little bit tight every day or get up from your desk, do a few different um, joint cars to really help increase that movement. Have fun. If you have any questions, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube channel.